When I was in seventh grade, when the symptoms were really kicking in, that's when the bullying really started. My friends thought it was funny that I would fall easily and it would eventually caught on to the whole grade that if you gave me a little push, I would fall over and this to boys was highly amusing. I think um, the worst part of this whole episode is that he had to endure 18 months pre-diagnosis and uh, broke my heart that he had to endure that on his own. The problem with myasthenia is that it can be hard to diagnose and they, the symptoms of just weakness or this facial weakness uh, can be ignored or attributed to something else like laziness or clumsiness and so we often see a delay in diagnosis which is actually something we're trying to help prevent. Myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disorder, and what this means is that the immune system is overactive. Somehow the body gets tricked into attacking the neuromuscular junction, the connection between the nerve and muscle, as if it were foreign or something to be gotten rid of. What causes this problem is a mistake in the immune system, and the body makes antibodies uh, that are specific against what we call the motor end plate which is just the wiring between the nerves and the muscles. There's a little junction there. And inside there, there's, there's a chemical transmitter that comes out of the nerve and goes onto the end plate here. And there's receptors there for that chemical transmitter. This antibody binds to that receptor and blocks that. It's like cutting a telephone line. Well, myasthenia gravis can present in two forms. There is an ocular form with the eyelid drooping and the eye misalignment, and then there's the generalized form where the child may present with a swallowing difficulty, breathing difficulty, arm or leg weakness. It can happen at any point in the lifespan. We have children under the age of two who develop autoimmune myasthenia, and elderly people in their 70s and 80s can develop it for the first time. What letter do you see up there? The reason to come to a place like Children's Hospital of Philadelphia is to see experts who have a vast knowledge of these conditions, who've seen many, many patients with that disorder, and who have a lot of experience with the diagnosis and management. How many here? One and two. Good, and look at me. What we noticed in Alexander was as he's growing in height, um, he was a bit awkward. He would bump into you occasionally. Then we noticed that he didn't want to smile for any photographs. I think a lot of people do take smiling for granted because when I couldn't smile, I definitely felt ashamed because when people would talk to me I would be like oh, I want to smile at you I want to make myself welcome for you to talk to me and I just couldn't. He was not fluid in his movements but sometimes you put it down to awkwardness of an adolescent boy we had no idea it could be anything else. It was a gradual process it got gradually worse. I would walk upstairs and suddenly my knees would give out or I would fall and I just thought, oh, I slipped or just missed a step. To establish a diagnosis quickly is crucial in myasthenia gravis because there is damage occurring at the junction between the nerve and muscle throughout the course of the disease and without treatment this damage eventually becomes permanent. When we look at treating myasthenia we have many options and our goal is for somebody to have a completely normal life and not know that they have myasthenia whatsoever. If we were very aggressive with the treatment of patients with myasthenia uh, because we feel that earlier 
the patients are treated, the better off they do. Well, a thymus is an organ in the chest. The thymus sits right here underneath the breastbone, it can extend all the way up to the neck, and extends down over the top part of the heart. And it is an organ for training the immune system. Well, we like to do a thymectomy to remove the thymus uh, because we think that it helps us use less medication and reduces the risk in patients who start with the ocular form of the myasthenia spreading to the rest of the body. We believe that once the child is old enough and doesn't really need the thymus anymore, that taking out the thymus does affect the immune system in such a way that it helps the myasthenia improve. Awesome. Right. So I'll see you guys in the recovery room afterwards. All right. Sounds great. Thank, Thank you. And so we make three small incisions on the chest here. And through those three incisions, we'll, in one, we'll place the camera, and in two others, we'll put very small tools that let us grasp and, uh, and dissect. The, the thoracoscopic methods weren't really available to children except for the last you know, six years or maybe even the last decade. And instead, uh, a thymectomy in a child usually involved um, a big incision from the notch of the neck and splitting the breastbone like open heart surgery. Well, the, the benefits of the thoracoscopic approach with the tiny incisions are, are gigantic. Because we've sneaked through the spaces between the ribs, we don't have to cut any bone, we don't divide any muscle. The incisions themselves are, are so small that the, that the pain involved is really minimal. What used to take about a week to get over is now just a single night in the hospital in most cases. So I had surgery on Monday and I was out of the hospital the next day and then went back to school on Friday. And like anything in life, practice makes perfect. We know that we have one of the largest, if not the largest series of cases uh, in North America and maybe in the world. Um, we're very, very experienced and have an established track record for doing this procedure very safely. We are very fortunate to be living so close to such an excellent facility as CHOP. And right from the beginning, and initially you're, you're really very traumatized by the fact that there's something wrong with your child, yet everyone seemed very efficient, competent, and very nurturing as well. We really trusted Dr. Blinman. He did explain it so well. And uh, we felt we'd done our research. And we thought this will give Alexandra a chance to beat this disease. Well, the, the improvement after the thymectomy can be dramatic. Uh, in the best cases, within a few months, they may have complete remission of their disease and certainly some improvement. Uh, in their weakness, even as the medications are coming off. But that's not everyone. And it can take weeks, months, or years before the effect is seen. And in some, they'll never get any improvement. So as soon as the operation is over, the patients can expect to just start back up exactly on the same medication. And then later, the neurologists will start to withdraw those drugs based on their symptoms. Remission is a tricky term in myasthenia because what we hope is that the disease is never going to come back and that the person will remain symptom free. However, once someone's immune system has learned how to attack the nerve muscle junction, it knows how to do that forever and it can happen at any point. We have patients who become symptom free and are fine for years and then come back with exactly the same symptoms again two years later, ten years later and having myasthenia is a lifelong disease. We don't promise that people uh, will get better by having their thymus taken out. Um, what we can promise is that their odds of getting better are improved. This is looking pretty good. Once the child has reached a period of stability, typically we just do annual follow-ups to make sure the child's doing okay, that there aren't new symptoms. Our goal is to make sure that they have 
no or very little symptoms for the rest of their life so they can lead normal lives. So it's been two years since my surgery and I'm doing excellent. To be able to get him on treatment where those symptoms improved and he was actually able to return to the activities that he usually did was really gratifying because I saw him go back to being a thriving teenager. It was awfully gratifying to see someone get such a good result and we hope for that result with every patient. He would make us laugh because he would come in, check his smile in the mirror just to make sure it's still working. It would give me a lump in my throat. It still does to this day to see him smile. My sports has come back. I'm now one of the most athletic kids in my high school. And I'm, like people like me better because I can smile at them. I can talk to them. I don't hide away from social scenes. And it really does feel like a different person.